guys welcome back to my channel I just wanted to make an introductory part to this video because I know there are a lot of print your own fabrics out on YouTube and the internet um, using your at-home inkjet printer so uh, but I, I wanted to try and bring a different approach two ways and an experiment as well to show you which methods fix the dyes better to the fabric than the others um, there's a lot of quilting videos that teach you how to do this, but I, I think it's kind of a useless tutorial or useless lesson if you are not able to launder the fabric after you print it. Um, I've, I've saw many videos before doing this. I did my research. Um, a great resource besides YouTube is a website called Dharma Trading, and I will show you some of the chemicals that I bought prior to doing that there's a lot of quilting videos that show you how to do this then they're like okay but you can't wash it and they're showing you how to make all these really cool heirloom quilts using your family pictures but then you can't wash it um i mean it, it, that's useless to me in my opinion so with a little bit of research um i these are things that i have figured out and i'm showing you two ways and you can be the judge of which way you want to end up fixing your fabric to make sure that the dye does not wash off. In my findings, so basically, um, I wanted to do printable fabrics because I wanted to do very nice custom masks. Um, I have this, and I use, this is this is great. I love this because you can make patches with it, but the thing is you cannot use a whole sheet to cover your face because it does have it's a fusible back on this type. Now they do make some that do not have a fusible back. You peel it off and the whole thing is a fabric, but those are so expensive as well. And you still have the issue with having to fix your dye to the fabric, um, dry clean only, like it's, and the, the, the dye may, may or may not even stay. I can tell you from an initial um, practice run I had printed out it was a full sheet it was like blue with Godzilla and another Mothra like in in a lagoon or something so this was like all blue um, I washed it I let it dry for 24 hours and then I washed it and the the dye as you can see here it turned back into a white piece of fabric um, so if you do not pre-treat your fabric it is it will 100% wash out now I did have another one which I'll show you. I did a printout and I had shown this on my Instagram. If you guys follow my Instagram, it's Egypt Machine a while back when I had started this uh, experimental process. It was a picture I printed out only in black and white of like an octopus taking over a ship. And I let that dry for like, I'm gonna say more than three days because I, I went on to other product, projects and I washed that one and it only faded a little bit. So I don't know if there's an issue, like the, the color dyes are not as, are, they just run, they're not as color fast as back in white. Also, the issue with just letting your fabric set for days it is also a positive in when, in when you're doing this. This is something you definitely wanna take your time with. Um, in this case, you know, I let this sheet dry for 24 hours, but that octopus one, it was more than three days. So please take into account when you do this, this is not gonna be a fast process. The processing of the fabric before you even get to the printing part is a little bit, but if you can do this in bulk with like a couple yards of fabric and then get everything cut out, then once you get to that point, then ironing it to your freezer paper and getting it through the printer will be quick. So let me just show you something. So on my research, there is, and I will put all the links below on where I bought this stuff. This is from a company called C. Jenkins Necktie Company. They had one for general inkjet printers. This one I bought specifically for um, HP printers because I have an HP printer. Um, it was like 18, what was it? I spent $25 for this. 32 ounce that was with shipping so it is it is a little pricey as an investment but it if you want to do custom stuff it, it's a good investment you know what i mean 
because um, I mean custom stuff is never it's never cheap so keep keep that in mind when you're doing this so I got this thing it's called bubble bubble jet and I got it specifically for my HP printer but like I said they do have a cheaper one for general inkjet printers as well as a jets bubble jet set for Epson printers so there was a few options on the website and I just I'm going for the best outcome possible so again I got the HP solution because I have an HP printer um, so on here you're going to well before I do this also when you pre and always you guys pre-wash your fabrics you're also gonna need something called synthropole now I got a generic version from Dharma trading company there's a whole story why they invented their own version of synthropole um, it's cheaper and they claim it works just as good synthropole is basically a detergent that pre-treats the fabric it takes out all the gum any kind of wax coating the fabric like it basically gets the fabric ready to receive dye like it like it if you're going to facial and you put a hot towel open your pores like that's it's cleaning you the face you know what I mean like it's it's cleaning the fabric to accept the dye better so that's what we're going to do here so it says here use exactly a synthropol one fourth cup per washing machine load um, rayon, hemp, etc. Et uh, you can do silks, and then I'm just going to read you exactly what it says. Um, pre wash to clean and prepare fabric for dyeing. Get rid of fingerprints, oil, silk, warm gum, and other things that cause the dye not to adhere well, and as an afterwash to get the excess out. So, now when you get the fabric, you're going to want to get the highest weave possible for a white fabric. So at Joann's Fabrics, what I can get as like the highest thread count or whatever are these is a brand called Kona. It's a it's fabrics for quilting, but it's a very high weave count. So you want to have the best quality high thread count cotton fabrics for this because you want to make sure like your ink gets on every single thread of your fabric. And if it's loosely woven, well, you know, you have like, you have like a waffle thing going on where there's lots of holes in between the weaving and you're not going to get the best picture quality if you choose a very low thread count um, fabric. So my God, I'm already going on eight minutes talking about this. But another thing, so after, and I'll show you, but I just... It's just gonna be a lot of steps, you guys. So I just really think that this introductory part is, so first pre-wash your fabrics in your Synthropol or your professional textile detergent generic uh, alternative from Dharma Trading. After you do that, you're going to then soak um, your your pre-cut fabric. You're gonna cut them in eight by 11s because that, that's the size of like a general printer paper. Um, you're gonna soak the solution in your bubble jet, saturate solution for five minutes, allow to dry, iron, then do the freezer paper thing, print, and this and this one says let sit for 30 minutes. We're gonna let it sit for 24 hours, you guys, or longer. And then after you do that, then we're gonna, wa I'm gonna have one version that we post wash again with our Synthropol. And then the other one, because remember, I'm going to do two printouts so we can see which is going to be the better outcome. This is another chemical from Dharma Trading Company. This is called soda ash. Soda ash is also a fixer. It makes the fabric stay on the fabric. Um, it says directions used to fix, make permanent fiber reactive dyes on your fabric. So I'm going to have a, a, a post solution of the synthropol for one printout and then another one that's going to get washed in the soda ash we're going to compare wash again and see which one is the better outcome um, i'm really excited so let's begin okay so i'm in my laundry room i'm gonna throw all this see this one this is one of the other ones that I don't know if you could it's hard to tell on camera but this one still has like a blue 
tinge to it and when I try to print that one picture out and I'll just throw the rest of this in there. I have my one fourth cup right here. Um, one fourth per washing load. One ounce for, oh, and one eighth cup for silks or front loading washing machines, which I have a front loader. So I'm gonna use one eighth cup, which will be half of one fourth cup. Um, best use in hot water. Well, okie dokie. Let me go ahead and set that. I'll do half. Okay, so I'm gonna do this on a quick wash, hot water, high spin, light soil level. Um, so let's see, let's see what happens. All right, so I already ironed my pieces. I already have these pre-cut out from a previous try, but like I said, I washed them and the dye went right out and it turned it back into a white piece of fabric. So I already have these pre-cut. So you pretty much just wanna cut your ironed white fabric out in eight by 11 cuts of fabric, um, or you know, any shape that you want. It, it, I guess technically could be smaller, but I'm trying to get a full sheet here. So I'm doing a whole regular paper size. Um, so go ahead and cut these out, iron them again if you need to, kind of clean these up. So now I'm going to go to my kitchen and I'm going to get a flat pan because that is what the bubble jet says, bubble jet set says, cannot speak. So what we're going to do, it says shake well, pour solution in can, saturate fabric in solution for five minutes, then allow it to dry, iron it again, and then we will cut it to the freezer paper. And if you want to at this point as well, so that way you're not, you don't keep coming back and you're like, oh, I gotta keep cutting, I gotta keep cutting. Once you've cut these out and you iron them, go ahead and take out some freezer paper and you're going to iron that to one of the sides of your fabric. Let me show you the freezer paper. So with the freezer paper, you buy this in the aisle at the store where um, they have like all the Ziploc bags, lunch bags, aluminum foil, that aisle. And this was like, I think it was almost eight bucks with tax, but you get um, 33, 33 and a half yards, oh, I'm sorry, 33 and a third yards, which is 150 square feet. So it, when you when you do get your freezer paper, you'll notice there's a dull side, and then if you turn it over, there is a shiny side. So you'll want to cut your freezer paper in the same size as your cuts, you know, cuts of fabric. So you'll cut them the same size. You'll cut it the same size. You'll put the shiny side, because what, what's happening with the freezer paper is that like it kind of melts it temporarily to the fabric and in turn sticking to the fabric. So that way you can run it through your printer. But, but I do have some tips for that, but I will come back to that right now. So let's go ahead and get your bubble jet set I'm gonna put it in a pan. You can reuse the solution. You don't have to dump, you know, a new layer, a new serving of, of solution into the pan for each sheet of fabric. You just need to saturate it. So I'm gonna go one by one. I'm gonna do my three sheets here. I'm gonna let them just sit in the solution for five minutes. Let them air dry. I'm not gonna throw it in the dryer. I'm just gonna let it air dry. Iron it straight again like this, and then I will come back to the tips on how to fuse it to your freezer paper.
So I have my iron. I'm gonna turn off the steam setting and I'm gonna put it like on a, um, I'm gonna put it on a polyester. I'm not gonna put it all the way up on like high cotton linen heat. Just, just something enough to melt the plastic to the fabric. And then what we're gonna do after it's adhered. So through my experiments, when I was doing this earlier this week, um, once it is adhered to it, see when, you, when it goes through the printer, if you ever look like inside the printer and you're staring at it as it's coming out of the, the machine, there's like these little fibers that, that like scrape across as it's coming out. And I was noticing on the corners, it peels it up. And, and, and some of the times it would make my paper jam. And then other times, like it would just get like wrinkly. So like one section where it was printed would be like, that part would be wasted. You know what I mean? So once this is adhered to that, we're going to go ahead and scotch tape all around to keep it down to avoid that problem from happening. I mean, you will get a little bit of, of, of wastefulness because there's gonna be ink that is wasted on the perimeter, like where the um, scotch tape is, but it's not, a, it's not as bad as if you just leave it like that and let the printer just take it. And then on some of the other tries that I did, it was actually like completely like peeling off and shifting while it was coming through the printer. So doing that with the scotch tape definitely helps. So let me go ahead and adhere this. So what you're gonna do is on the, the shiny side, see how it's kind of like glistening or whatever? Reflecting is the word. You're gonna put your iron sheet that you already measured out and cut. So I'm gonna hit it with the heat. I'm gonna hold it down a little more. Come on. Here, I'm gonna... Just gotta wait for it to get a little bit hotter. I don't think it was like warmed up all the way. just kind of okay so that's there you go now it's warming up I was like don't tell me something's wrong with my iron because this is how I did it the last time so you just want to make sure you got those corners down but again remember we're still going to go back right now and cover the perimeter of this with scotch tape so it adheres the fabric to the freezer paper okay so that's stuck. So where's my scotch tape? Scotch tape, scotch tape. So I'm doing this. I try not to have too much of it on the fabric because I do want to get the most out of the printable, the print to be on the fabric and then the back on the you see that and then also another tip before you run it through the printer just give the fabric on top just a little yeah, go over it once with the lint roller because we want to have this sheet of paper to just be crisp and pristine and no uh, wrinkles or lumps in it, especially when we iron it down. We, you, we just want this to be to be absolutely clean. So right, I have a little bit of, of lint on this that's it picked up from the ironing board. So once that's ready, then I'm gonna come back and I'll, I'll go once over with the lint roller. So I have just sent the picture to the printer. When you do this, just make sure you take out all your 
regular printer paper that's in the tray and then just have like the one sheet. Let's see if I can get a shot of it. Coming out in here. And then just make sure you know how to load the paper because remember, you're only printing on the fabric side, not the freezer paper side of your, I don't know, what would you call your, your concoction, your combination thing. Um, so just make sure you have it the right side that the printer's gonna pick it up and actually print on the fabric and not on the wrong side. Here it comes. You know, see see what I was saying about the the scotch tape? I didn't scotch tape that part, so. We'll see how it comes out. Okay, this one has a little bit of, of smudge from the printer. But that's okay for me. I, 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 what I really want is the picture that's about to come out at the bottom. So we'll see how that comes out. And again, I needed a print too anyways, because I want to show you guys the difference between fixing it, fixing it with the soda ash and then uh, versus just washing it again in the cinder paw. Okay, I'm going to yank this out. Ooh. Okay, cool. So I'm going to print this again. And then we're gonna leave it like everything that you do. I'm gonna print three pictures today. Um, also, another tip: if you can, before you go and print it, clean the printer heads and just align them. Like if you have any of the newer printers, will have this option to clean and align the printer heads. So just do that before you print one of these out. I already did that before on another printout, so I didn't. I don't have to have to do it again, but. Just do that, just for optimal quality and all that jazz. So okay. I have waited 24 hours. My sheets are now, I guess, fully dry, fully saturated from the printer ink, like I said in, in the previous scene. Um, I also, before I came over here, I heat set my, my printed sheets. I just ironed them again with a dry iron, no steam, just to heat set it. Remember, I'm trying all possibilities to set this printer ink in the fabric and hopefully uh, right now there will be no running and the fabric the colors stay as brilliant as possible so um the like i said just to remind you so with this experiment i'm gonna have one sheet because i did print out another one of this the other one i am only going to rinse do another wash with the synthropol alternative and these here I'm going to just go ahead and do a soak rinse um, in soda ash I did get the soda ash from Dharma Trading Company it says to measure at one ounce per gallon of warm water which I have um, some warm sink water in here and I already measured out an ounce of soda ash in on my scale and it's in here so I'm just going to dump all of this. And I was going over some of the comments. Um, they did say it's best to do this in warm or boil the water. I'm just going to swish it to get it. To get all the the powder dissolved do wear gloves when you do this all right so oh I'm so nervous let's see what happens you're gonna look in my disgusting shower now all right let's go with this let's, let me go try this this first picture um, I was reading also in the directions you should soak this before you dye, but I'm doing it after. Um, that's kind of a misread on my part, but again, this is kind of a tutorial slash experiment. So I'm just going to go with it because I want you to see what happens. So I'm going to soak 
This one, my friend really likes this chick. So I'm gonna put it in the water and let's see what, what happens. I'm just gonna let that soak for it. Cause I, I don't wanna put the blue because if the blue, like if this one turns out okay, and I put in the blue and it bleeds, like I don't want, I'm afraid of dye transfer. Um, so again, this is kind of, this is an experiment slash tutorial with the different chemicals here. Um, wow, it is not um, bleeding. <laughs> Because the first time I tried to rinse out, like I was saying before, this previous print in my earlier experiments, the dye immediately left the fabric. And um, I was really sad. Okay, so I'm gonna soak it in here. I do see the water turning a little pink, so there is a little bit of bleeding, but um, I mean, it's, but it's, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? You do, you should expe expect some amount of bleeding whenever you're rinsing or you just washing anything like that. Okay, so the color did not leave me. I'm gonna just spread that out and leave that to the side to dry. Okay. All right, guys, here it goes. Here's the one that I am super nervous about. So you see the color now? Uh, let's see what happens. I'll remind you again, all of these sheets though were soaked in the bubble jet set before oh my god you guys it didn't it didn't bleed <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna let that soak in the soda ash so let me just sit here and rant a little bit going over the process because after this i'm not going to show it on camera i'm going to just do another wash with the Synthropol, with everybody, because I, I, I do want to rinse out the any of leftover soda ash chemical that's on this fabric because I am going to make stuff out of it. Um, <clears throat> and then you'll see, if, if all goes well, then you'll see a finished product of what I've been trying to do with these printed fabric sheets. But this is really, really awesome, you guys. Like I said, the first time I did this, this this instantly turned into a white piece of fabric again. So this bubble jet set absolutely was essential. It was the key to getting this to work. And just to remind you, I did buy the specific bubble jet set for my HP printer. I told you um, in the beginning, they have a cheaper for all generic inkjet printers. And then they also had one specifically for Epson. So if you have either an Epson or an HP, I would highly recommend that you get the one for your printer. And then of course, if they don't mention your printer, get the other generic one. But all the links will be listed below. I don't see any, there is no transfer. I am so amazed. I'm so pleased, you guys. This is going to be, this This was a long tutorial. It's been a very long experiment experimentation process in the making um and again it says me just trying to come up with other things than spending thirty dollars on photo paper from the store and even then on the instructions it says to dry clean or don't get wet at all so like i said that that doesn't work for me so final phase is here this is what I decided to do. I'm gonna throw 
all three remember now this lo this loose one when we do the comparisons at the end this loose one is going to be uh, the non soda ash treated one and I put the ones that were treated in soda ash in these like delicate bags so I'm gonna do that with the 1 4 cup synthropol in um, in a warm wash and see what happens Thank you.